low key, do they like go out and sow their wild oats while they're on mission? Is that like I mean, they're a, certainly a not thing supposed people... to. No, yeah. it, but it's not like a wink, wink. No, I don't. <laughs> yeah, I don't like. I mean, sex is really a no-no and really? a wow. very, you know, you are not supposed to do like anything, not even necking before you get married. Wow. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty much frowned upon. I'm sure it happens. I bet that makes people get married. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's like, there's jokes about, um, the, uh, Brigham Young University that uh people will go get married to just basically have a one night stand and then get it kind of an old the next day just because they were that antsy damn that is like consent on a whole other level dude <laughs> yeah yeah so you know i i feel like i left before getting through um some of the major stuff but like i've been through the baptism for the dead welcome to what's my thesis i'm your host javier proenza and today my guest is allison neville Allison is showing here at Monta Vista Projects. Well, actually, it's the end of the show. It is the end of the show. I might be giving away my prejudices, but I feel like uh, Utah, I feel like it's a, it would be like a hippie scene, even though that seems counterintuitive. <laughs> it does have like a, I don't know. like What is the art scene? You, you tell me. <laughs> uh, so it, I do feel like there's lots of talent there. Like uh -huh. I, I do like to visit LA, you know, just to get like an injection Mm -hmm. of lots of art, different spaces, different kinds of things and everything from, you know, your kind of boring Andy Warhols to like contemporary stuff that you're excited to see in person and would never make it to Utah. And so I do feel like there's lots of really talented artists that are living and working in the state. It's just like, I don't know, it doesn't, um, I don't think the amount of resources and opportunities exists. Are there artists from space? The artists. Are there artists from space over there? Um, so there are very few. Okay. Um, there's, you know, maybe one or two in Salt Lake and then like one in Ogden. Um, and of course, like, you know, I'm in I'm from Bountiful, so I'm right in between Ogden and Salt Lake. Uh so I don't know. I'm sure there's like a whole landscape vibe in the southern part of the state that yeah. like I'm just not a part of it all. Wait, so it's not landscapey where you are? Like I there's mean, not landscape, you know, like, like, like the, the geography or the geology, I yes. guess. I mean, it is absolutely gorgeous landscape. Um, the northern part of the state is not red. You know? Okay. Southern part is the whole red rock uh, scene. Um, but there's opportunities for like conceptual artists that are not based in landscape. Um, in so like there's, there's a big conceptual scene? In yeah. The, okay. Yeah. I feel like it's, it's decent, you know? Okay. There's, uh, well, I think the reason, and the reason my prejudice, like, I feel like, I feel a little bit like Utah is low key, a little bit like Colorado in ways that maybe, you know, like there's so much nature and it's so friggin' glorious. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like we're yeah. in a desert here. So, so I could see a lot of inspiration, but that, but I also associate that with like climbing and those kinds of guys, mm -hmm. like, you know, like granola artists yeah, <laughs> is, yeah. It, is it is that unfair because no, hiking is so big there there's i feel like that's a decent chunk of it you know okay. like there there are artists that are you know definitely and i'm not making... throwing shade i'm just trying to get a visual of it mm -hmm. yeah yeah so yeah i feel like it does exist it, it feels smaller than maybe is justified by the amount of people that are there working in, in salt lake city has a has a scene um, a lot of the spaces that I've kind of been a part of have been um, state funded, which is kind of interesting. So it does exist. There's only like one or two of them. Um, it feels like it's probably more significant than like Wyoming and mm -hmm. perhaps Idaho. But, you know, definitely. I don't know. It's also a growing community. Like we always joke that we're getting everybody from California because they can sell their place here and then they can move to Utah and get four times as much real estate. For the same price. Yeah. And if you're not, and if you're cool, like living in isolation where <laughs> like it's, it's pretty dope. I mean, I think living in the middle of nowhere, California, Southern California versus living in the middle of nowhere, Utah, it, there, it, there's definitely an upgrade. Yeah. And she, and like, it's not even about the price for me, like just how gorgeous it is. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've only really been to Zion, mm -hmm. but like, or Zion, how you guys say it, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's lots of there's like the um the place where I went to high school, the our uh competition school was Tooele and okay. it's spelled T O O E L E. And it's just like there's no way for you to get from that word to <laughs> that pronunciation like at all. Like it's just not even possible. There's a lot of that in Utah. Yeah. Interesting. So is that like 
would Zion Zion be like considered a more Mormon pr pronunciation, or like what is what is your relationship to that? I mean, obviously it's it's Utah, so yeah, that's it, definitely the dominant religion for sure. <laughs> if I was asking you about Italy, we'd be talking about Catholics. We would, <laughs> yeah. I've I've made the mistake of um, you know like forgetting outside of Utah that the church you know, is Mormon in Utah, but anywhere else it's, it's Catholic. So yeah. Oh no, it's Protestant actually. It's, you think it's Protestant? Yeah. Okay. Where do you, where do you find most, like that, that, that actually shocked me. I feel like, I feel like Canada is where, where I sort of got, uh, tied up with that where they're like, what are you talking about? That's not, that's not Catholicism. I'm like, oh, sorry. It's Mormonism in my neck of the woods. Wait, uh, wait, wait, but what states do you think California is very Catholic? I mean, it kind of is, but yeah, like, I guess, but like the white people aren't. Mm -hmm. You know, like, I mean, obviously, yeah. like, I think that's like more of a Latin American thing. Whereas like the Puritan, I mean, when we think of like Puritans, which is, I think, a prerogative or a pejorative, mm -hmm. um, not a prerogative. <laughs> <laughs> Something else entirely. Um, yeah, I, I think that anyway, we're in the weeds here, but I'm just shocked that you thought America, because I think that like, like, I think I told you before we started recording that I feel like they think of us as just as much weirdos. Mm -hmm. like, <laughs> yeah. Like, but the pilgrims weren't Catholic. No. They were running away from Yeah, they were like, trying to get away from all well, that. They were actually running from the Anglicans. Mm -hmm. But uh, they which, just wanted to start their own weird shit. Yeah, know? yeah. So, okay, then like, and then you, you, uh, you told me off air that you... Uh, left at 19 yes is it easy to like just declare because I mean I'm assuming your family is so I actually really lucked out in that I was the last of my siblings to leave oh. um, and then once I made that choice I think it made my parents sort of kind of reevaluate whether or not they wanted to keep going you know with all of us children making the choice to leave the church then the eternal family no longer exists in the afterlife so what's the point of kind of, you know, going to the meetings anymore at that point. Um, so me and all of my siblings and my parents are actually all ex-Mormon at this point. Okay. And your um, parents are, are ex yeah, as yeah, well? Yeah, my parents are ex as well. They uh, adore coffee and it's the cutest thing. I absolutely <laughs> love it. Um, you know, they had to wait their whole lives and now they finally have it twice a day and it's super cute. Um, but yeah, so ex Mormon, I, what a, you know, left before some of the extra particular, um, you know, rituals would have been done because I, I like, like the, the coming of age rituals for an individual or, or yeah, are you talking yeah, about usually like church wide? The, the marriage ones are, okay. are the ones that like I left before participating in those. So what I, are those? Um, so when you, uh, get married, it's called an endowment, um, and you go through, like, uh, usually men go through them first because they're supposed to serve a mission and ideally they've served the mission before they're getting married. Um, that doesn't always happen. Um, but do, it is, it, is it ideal. Low, low key. Do they like go out and sow their wild oats while they're on mission? Is that like, I mean, they're a, certainly a not thing supposed people... to. No, yeah. they, but it's not like a wink, wink. No, I don't. <laughs> yeah. I don't like. I mean, sex is really a no-no and really? a wow. very, you know, you are not supposed to do like anything, not even necking before you get married. Wow. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty much frowned upon. I'm sure it happens. I bet that makes people get married. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's like, there's jokes about um, the uh, Brigham Young University that uh, people will go get married to just basically have a one night stand and then get it kind of an old the next day just because they were that antsy damn that is like consent on a whole other level dude <laughs> yeah yeah so you know i i feel like i left before getting through um some of the major stuff but like i've been through the baptism for the dead uh procedure what's so, that um that so the idea is there's different stages of heaven right mm -hmm. so um the the highest stage like the the major goal that everybody's trying to achieve in death, um, it's mandatory that you be baptized. And if you were alive and never encountered Mormonism, could never be baptized into it, then somebody has to do that right for you. Mm -hmm. um, so, they, so you baptize dead people. So I, so basically, I was kind of a stand-in for um, names that have been submitted uh, to the temple or acquired 
Um, the church actually got in a huge amount of trouble for baptizing uh, Holocaust victims. Well, I um, can see why. <laughs> you know, so I, I think they promptly stopped that, which, you know, that was good. Like they got some outrage for that. There is uh, uh yeah. <laughs> there are yeah, some not steps great. and not then very are... tactful. Yeah, uh, you know? wow. Uh, so... But you know what? I bet it came from such a like earnest place. Or yeah. or do you do you, like what's your stance? Do you think that like uh, church leaders are uh, true believers or like? I so I feel like the and I was in just like Latter Day Saint. I was in the the, the, the main one. Yeah, yeah, yeah the main not... one, the kind of tame one yeah. as well. Um, so I, I mean, I feel like most people, and I have a lot of like family and friends that are, are still completely active and it is a great like default way to have a community to like know your neighbors mm -hmm. um, that sort of situation. Um, so I don't like, so then it's plausible that they actually meant well yeah, when they were doing yeah. it. They just had no, it was just completely tone deaf. Yeah. They should have, they should have maybe thought about it Talk like a little a bit person. longer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, maybe get a, a better idea behind it. But I, I imagine they're just, you know, the idea is that they're opening a gate for everybody in the afterlife to get yeah, into yeah. the most swanky of apartments. So like, you've got to, you know, you've got to have that baptism right done. But you, but so then in the ritual, you were the person experiencing, like you were, you were the stand in, you were yeah. like the body double. Yeah. I was dunked, you, you know, dunked. for every name. What did that experience do to you? Like, cause I mean, a lot of ritual. Yes. Okay. If we go into the abstract and we think like, okay, now all these people are going to get to the heaven, which we can maybe define a little bit in a second. But, um. Like, as the stand-in, you're performing the ritual, right? So anytime you're part of a ritual, there's something that you end up taking away. What did, what did you take away? What do you think they want you to take away? Because it's, it, I mean, like, that's a, that's a solemn responsibility, right? You yeah. know, you're taking on, like, the salvation of other people. Mm -hmm. How did you feel? Like, how old were you? I mean, I feel like it was, like, I left at 19, um, okay. you know. But, but during the right. But, yeah, I feel like it was, I was young enough to maybe not not have like super strong feelings you know i i felt like it was it was something i was completely encouraged to do mm -hmm. you know by like the leadership in the church and you know by my family at the time um and everything like mormonism is a really uh like quiet sort of a religion like like everything is really muted you're you're not you're not like having an intense emotional response like that's frowned upon. That's not reverence. Wow. Um, so I, I don't know. It, it was, it's like very quiet. You know, I, I, I felt like I was doing somebody some good, you know, like that was the point of, of going through it was to, you know, mm -hmm. kind of some, some level of altruism there, I guess. I think about transubstantiation <laughs> and and I guess it's like, you don't really think about it until you hit a certain age, what you're really doing, you yeah. know, like just like which transubstantiation for non-Catholics is uh, the eating of the Eucharist where you turn bread and water mm -hmm. into wine, uh, blood, uh, bread and wine into blood and, uh, and flesh, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I, <laughs> like yeah. I don't, so I don't think you can sugarcoat it. I think it really is blood and flesh, which is kind of yeah. a little bit, you know, cannibalism there, but yeah, it yeah. is a very, it is a very strange thing. Uh, one of the things that is interesting about all of this is just how like, um, like the, the, the moment where you break from having your Messiah be alive. I think that like, the, anyway, the whole thing about Christianity is that like, or that with Catholicism in particular, is that you are like that, uh, you have the Messiah, but the Messiah is supposed to not die. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then you have to come up with and cope with it and come up with like the um, resurrection myth mm -hmm. and redefine what a Messiah is. So all of these things are really interesting. Like just how, you know, how these things move <laughs> yeah. in, 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 in what's it called. So, and they're always evolving, always changing, right? Mm -hmm. Like new, new things come up, but, uh, but yeah. I feel like they never come up fast enough. Well, like you, that's one of my major issues with religion is it's like almost extinct by the time it's like written down and given a name. Like at that point, it's like all the ideas are super old and should probably, yeah. you know, be updated and revamped again by now. But you guys had uh, Brigham Young, which mm -hmm. was like the second 
coming almost, you know, or not the second coming, like without him, like it wouldn't have survived, right? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Like he is. The, I mean, there was like a. John Smith started it, but without Brigham Young, it wouldn't yeah. have been. And like, Joe, but you know. Joe, Joe yeah, Smith? Joseph, not John. Oh, sorry, Joseph yeah. Smith. Yeah. Sorry, I'm, oh. I, I'm like I don't mean any disrespect. Oh, no, 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 not at all. <laughs> not even to like your family or anybody else. I'm just interested in how people, like in in belief and faith in general. You know. Yeah, I mean, it's like uh, for me, it's really mundane because I still live in Utah. So mm-hmm. you know, and there is kind of an interesting, uh, you know, for like every culture, there's a counterculture. So in Salt Lake, you know, there's, there is kind of like an ex Mormon, like I technically should probably have tattoos mm-hmm. so people know, you know, like I'm out, yeah, yeah, yeah. um, which is, I don't know, kind of an interesting, an interesting sort of, uh, situation. Is your hair red? Mm. No, it's like so, strawberry blonde. Cause it, what, what, am I associating red with like Mormons incorrectly? Red oh, hair? I don't, I mean, there's is that definitely, more of an Irish thing? Yeah. I mean, I, at least for me, I feel like I, I just have a strange combination of like some of it's blondish, some of it's reddish, and okay. some of it's brownish. Um, but I mean, I like the church was pretty successful in um, converting, you know, decent amount of Catholic and, uh, or not Catholic, a, dif- a decent Christians. amount of, you know, in like Scottish and Irish, I think it okay. was somewhat popular. So oh. there could be quite a bit of red hair. I don't know why I'm, a, I, I'm literally straddling like offensive <laughs> areas but i'm like what where is this association coming from but like you know you probably couldn't do that with non-mormons yeah. <laughs> or like with minorities so i apologize if i if i ventured into like problematic uh associations with like uh, phenotypes yeah yeah i don't i mean i don't i've never actually googled to see like what the breakdown is but yeah i, I, I don't, don't know. know it was more popular like right now i don't think um, the church is gaining much membership anywhere but like South America. Um, yeah. So I don't know. It, it's, it might change. There might be different. Uh, the oldest, you know. the, the old hits are always the best. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's so that, like you guys are going in and taking our seconds mm-hmm. <laughs> with your missions. Yeah. Yeah. Um, cool. Well, we can, we can uh, maybe talk a little bit less about your, uh, your, how old, how old are you now? How long ago was it that you haven't been practicing? Um, let's see. So I'm 32. So it's been over a decade. Over a decade? Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. But it's not, it still hasn't been half of your life that you have been out. No, not yet. Uh, interesting. I, I, I wonder what, like, it'll be interesting to talk to you maybe 10 years from now and see. Yeah. And I definitely, I am forgetting too. Yeah. Like, you know, 10 years is long enough that even though I did graduate from seminary. You I, graduated from you seminary? Know, yeah. I had a certificate and everything. Um, but I, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not super savvy on all the scriptures and passages and, and also, you know, I haven't been a part of the church for 10 years. No, so 10 I, years I know some time. things have been updated and then, you know, like revoked back to the way it was, but you know, I, I'm becoming a dinosaur, I think when it comes <laughs> to Mormonism. That's interesting that it, that there's no new membership in, um, out here. In the, in the U.S.? Yeah, at least I think it's pretty low. Yeah. Like, that's not really where the church is growing. Do you think it's the offshoots that are maybe doing a little bit of bad PR? <laughs> I have no idea. Um, well, and I, I also, I think it's pretty easy. It's pretty easy to, like, look stuff up yeah. and, and maybe find, you know, like, the, the church does a good job of kind of sanitizing a lot of its history, right? Mm-hmm. It doesn't get rid of it outright. Like you, you can still go to the archives and find, you know, like really unpleasant kind of disgusting information about, you know, Joseph Smith and polygamy and, you know, the ages of some of those girls. But wait, wait, wait. let's not throw out the know. baby with the bathwater. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, but I, you I think do, that's disgusting. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah. I mean, well, you know, I spent 19 years thinking that, oh, I just didn't understand it. Like that, like really? that's the ultimate cop out I feel is like, oh, even if, even if it makes you really uncomfortable and it feels like immoral to you now, like there's just, you know, there are things that we don't understand. So you're not meant to understand it. So don't try. Yeah. You know, it's kind of at least the, the sentiment I got on, you know, if you, if you butt heads with some of the stuff that seems pretty gross, they're like, no, you just, you just can't understand it. You just, you know, your mortal mind. 
Is that kind of what got you sort of feeling like is, that was the main thing yeah, for you? Well, that was the sticking point? And it was also just um, like I had somebody that was becoming like increasingly more important to me and, you know, just asked, like, this is a lot of your time. You seem to be really guilty about a lot of things that you probably shouldn't be. Like, you seem like a decent person, but you feel rotten and like you're terrible. And, you know, like, why, like, why are you doing this? Like at the core, like what is, what is in it for you? Sort this of was y- your current husband or, yes. okay. Um, and it kind of just felt like, oh, I was doing it because my parents raised me to do it and their parents raised them to do it mm-hmm. and their parents raised them to do it. And at some point somebody made that choice and switched whatever the church they were a part of and, you know, joined the new one. I'm like, I don't know if that's you know, like a good reason to maintain all of no. this guilt. And, you know, a lot of like at the time it was um, Proposition 8 was kind of pretty fresh in my mind. And I just couldn't. Holy shit, that was ten, know, more than 10 years yeah, ago. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I know it's crazy to think about. But, you know, that was a big part of it is I'm like, I don't like I don't feel like letting gay people get married is bad. Yeah, yeah. Like I don't, you know, you aren't you aren't like allowing them to get married in the church or That's something, so interesting you know? that someone from Mormon is from from um uh, sorry, Utah. <laughs> someone from a Mormon state, from a, someone who's not from California is where so were they pushing that a lot within the church? Yeah, it so was you, it, like this was like you guys were being told that this is a battleground issue because that's like California pol- yeah, politics. Yeah, it's no, so crazy. It, it absolutely was. Like I don't I mean, I don't have the um, the announcement that was done over the pulpit, you know, yeah, yeah. during uh, church that week. Um, but it was something that they were encouraging, you know, go out and vote against this because, you know, if it, you know, or, well, I guess I don't know if it's against or for, but go out and try to make sure that gay marriage isn't legalized. Yeah, yeah. Um, because, In California, because then it yeah, opens the way for Yeah, because else. then then other states will want to follow and, yeah. you know. And that was like Bush, uh, yeah, Obama administration. Yeah. Like there was some of those little things that we don't like to talk about. They're so progressive now. Yeah. Um, last thing I want to ask about, which because I think it's fun, and I hadn't thought of this until you said it. What? Okay, so like, I kind of lean a little bit Satanist, mm-hmm. but I'm a hundred percent aware that it keeps me tied to Catholicism mm-hmm. because I am taking the mantle of the villain. Oh, yes. of my childhood. Yeah. How do ex Mormons rebel? Mm. Is there are there Satanists more ex Mormons? I mean, I'm sure that there are. I I I don't know if uh, at least for me personally, it was a really painful process to leave, mm. um, and it was really sad what in made a lot it, of what ways. What made it painful? Well, it was like I I was like forsaking like any good thing that happened to me that was associated with going to church. You know, like my father baptizing me and having, you know, the really touching photos of us together. So it was, I felt like I had, I was like turning my back on all of those, you know, good positive uh, memories and actively choosing to kind of leave it and, and not, you know, uh, not have that sort of community um, safety net situation. Mm -hmm. Cause that's, you know, like that's another thing is you, you, when you're in the church, you have people that are, you know, sort of checking on you, like making sure you're okay, that you don't need anything. Or, you know, if you lose your job, like your bishop will get you some food, you know, so that there was a lot that it was just like, nope, Mm -hmm. I'm, you know, I don't get these things anymore. I don't, you know, get to uh, go meet with these people. And now I'm sort of choosing to be an other. Mm -hmm. Um, So at least for me, I've, I've been very like rebel against anything else. Like, anything that even seems quasi like religious to me scares me off in like Mm. a really, you know, a really kind of sensitive way that I don't, you know, so I have not replaced it with anything. I mean, maybe the religion of art, you know, but I don't have to go to that every week, you know, that's maybe like (laughs) once a month for like a gallery stroll, but you know, that's the closest as, uh, as far as religions go. And I don't know if that's what most Mormons feel, if it was like intense enough that once they leave, they just don't really want to be a part of anything else, mm. you know? But there's, uh, but you sound pretty well adjusted, like in terms of like, it, it was, a th- you, you really talk about it like, yeah, it was a thing. Like you yeah. don't sound, I mean, do, do you, ca- like it's, a, there's a, 
you said guilt. Oh yeah, a <laughs> and lot as of a guilt. Catholic, Catholic, mm-hmm. I relate to you that. Can, Do yeah. you still have that? Um, there are some things like I, I still I have a lot notes. of modesty issues. Okay. Um, where I like, I'm like, oh, I feel like I shouldn't wear this because it's too revealing. Oh, but okay. Like, like in, in terms of yeah. like sh- revealing clothing. Yeah. Okay. Not modesty in terms of humility of no, like no, bragging about yourself. No, just I like flashback to, uh, you know, like fighting with my mom over like a three fingered tank top, you know, and like that not wow. being okay. Um, so I, I do feel like sometimes I, I don't know whether I'm just uncomfortable in it because I don't actually like the clothing or if I'm like, kind of reverting back to what I thought I was allowed to wear and not wear. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, I also, I also feel like there's sometimes where I actively do the opposite of like what I was told I could and could not wear when I was younger. Like what? what what's you that know? rule you like to break? Oh, I mean, I, you know, like I wear shorts that are above my knees. So scandalous. It's very scandalous. Yeah. I was going to say you were hiding your ankles right now. Yeah, they, they are. <laughs> In your you boot. Know, mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> I mean, uh, even the wrists are hidden. So yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's subconscious at this point. I'm not sure. No, I mean, it's fair. Like, I mean, I'm, I would bet that there are probably, there probably are some uh, uh, ex-Mormons that become promiscuous, like just based on what I know about Catholics and their guilt. Yeah, yeah. So, I'm sure it's pretty common to kind yeah, of yeah. like go overboard when you finally have all of these rules lifted, yeah. you know, because it's like, and I do, you know, I do really enjoy coffee, mm-hmm. you know, so that's been a fun, a fun ritual to bring back in my life is, you what's know, your, what's your relationship with alcohol? Um, so I, I don't know how to order drinks at bars because I was just too, you know, like I have, I have no way to do that. So that's very awkward for me. I do consume alcohol. Um, but I also am stuck on the side of like, I want it to taste good, even though I know that's like not the point. Um, so there's it does like- It taste good. I mean, uh, yeah, I don't Says know. the alcoholic. But like, I'm still, you know, I'm still like, I can't really do red wine. I don't know if I'm going to like graduate into that category, you know, when I'm like 50 or something, maybe I never will, so. I mean, I'm literally thinking like, that might be a good thing. Yeah, <laughs> that, I, yeah. that might be a I good mean, thing. I mean, it's certainly a with. lot cheaper too. I mean, that, What know, is a lot cheaper? Like, not drinking? Yeah, not oh, drinking yeah, 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 yeah. a lot or like, you know, only only getting like a beer and that's- that's all I need. That knocks you out. Yeah. 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 It's much more economical that way. Yeah. It, it, uh, Catholics drink. <laughs> oh, yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I can't relate to that, but it sounds amazing. Um, okay. So then, we, I mean, we're like already half an hour in. I'm sorry to, <laughs> to go so long on Mormonism, but it is really interesting. I'm always interested in, in, really, in what religions do to us. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, and um, so, okay. So you talked a little bit about your art. Um, be like the church of art. We're sitting with some of your yes. work. It might be hard to see, but we got miniatures. They're in little cans. What kind of cans? Yeah, like a tinned uh, fish can. So everything from kippers to sardines to pates. The pate the st- was the grossest. You ate all of it. I I have a lot of guilt about like discarding food, mm-hmm. so I can't like go and buy something and then throw it away. So. Me or my family has, you know, Consume enjoyed some, like, you know, one of them salmon. So that's easy. But is there a Mikey know. in your family where you'll give he'll eat anything? <laughs> yeah, I feel like I can I can usually get, you know, somebody to eat. Did most you get of that it. reference? No. no. <laughs> I just realized that you gave me a polite laugh. No, uh, there was a Chex commercial, which was like uh, a, about like in the 80s where uh-huh. it's like I just realized how old you were. Um I just give it to Mikey. It. He'll eat anything, oh. and then and then he eats it. And they go and he goes and they go. He likes it. He, <laughs> I tried to crack my voice and I couldn't. He likes it. He really likes it. <laughs> so that's what I was referencing. You guys can Google it. Um, okay. So then and then there's like uh, little figurines. How did you get mm-hmm. into miniatures? Um, so at the very end of kind of my time getting my BFA, um, where'd you study? Uh, Weber State University, just in Ogden in Utah. Okay. Weber. Yeah. I mean, it's spelled Weber. So like, you know, but I assume it's some dude's last name. I just imagine a a bunch of guys that really like anime 
yeah. which are called weebs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't, I mean, there may have been a significant population, especially in the art building. Of, um, of anime fans? Yeah, of anime fans. You know. it's, and, but this is not seminary. This is No. So, But seminary at 19, so you did like one year of seminary? Oh, That's out of high school, right? Um, so seminary for me, so I, um, I lived in South Carolina for a while, so went from Mormonism being the majority to being an extreme minority down south. Um, so that was waking up and going at 6 a.m. before uh, high school. Um, okay. And then, so you go through four years of it, essentially. During high school? Yeah, during okay. high school. And once you live in Utah, like, they just build a little seminary building right across the street. So you just yeah, pop over there for the religious stuff and then pop back. Yeah, so you don't have to do 6, uh, 6 a.m.? No, no. So I did one year of that, and I can, like, brag about, like, actually working for it. Okay. Uh, but, yeah, once once I lived in Utah, it's, you know, it's just another class. So then your your university in Ogden, uh, Weber, is a, a secular, or is it? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah, it's just, uh, um, I started out at a different university and found that I couldn't get into art classes. It seemed really stupid to which one, which, you know, which university? that was Utah State uh, University. Why couldn't they? Wouldn't, couldn't you get into art classes? I think the it sounded like they were in between art department heads, um, so they were just like really underfunded and like didn't have a person kind of devoting their time to, you know, recruit more staff like that sort of thing. So mm. I was so I was paying to live in a city where the main campus is, and then I was commuting through a canyon all winter long to go to an extension in a grocery store to take the like painting one and drawing one classes. And I just thought that was really stupid. Like, How were those classes? Were they at least, I mean, I, mean, the, I feel like the professors were, you know, they, they were still good. It just, you know, it just it's felt a like a stupid, you know, I didn't want to commute. I was living on campus. Like, And also it's hard to feel like you're graduating from an art school if your art school is like or if yeah, you're if in the a grocery store yeah, it's not, exactly. yeah it just so yeah i i went there um got my like associates of applied science through that university and then transferred to uh, weber and finished up there and i actually had hopes to go to um i would guess it's the largest university in utah but the university of utah that's in salt lake mm -hmm. um and had them do the portfolio review, which was going to, you know, accept or reject all of the art credit that I had taken. Uh, and they, and this will be the title if I ever get to do a retrospective. Mm -hmm. um, they rejected all of my art credit. You know, every single one wanted me to take like 30 credits over again, and spend god awful amount of money with them. Um, and the, the one line they had written down was creative, but lacks fundamental skill. Oh, um, wow. so that will be the title of a, of a solo show if I ever get to do one. Yeah, the, um, the, 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 the craftsmanship on these is terrible. <laughs> I know, it's awful. <laughs> no, um, it looks really good. It's really, I mean, uh, you know, it, it goes to show I got a D in my, in my high school art class and mm -hmm. now I have an art podcast. Yeah, so. exactly. You never know. You never know. Uh, and it may have, I don't know, it may have made me, you know, decide to get way better to kind of show them you know i'll show you yeah like some stubbornness at, at being rejected um so at the very end of my bachelor's degree i was thinking about like creating tiny worlds of some sort mm -hmm. um my emphasis was two-dimensional was you know kind of drawing uh but i just wanted to start playing around with them so i bought just model railroad materials you know, so like the little tiny foams and the mm -hmm. little tiny animals that you would put with the rail, uh, the little railroad situation that, you know, usually older white gentlemen, it's their hobby. Um, and so I started playing around with those and I'd make like weird caves and like have the sheep live in the caves. And I don't know. So I, I sort of was was venturing into three dimensional and kind of using materials that maybe weren't meant to be conceptual. Um, and then these was kind of a step towards like 3D printing. Was Wait, what do you mean good. a material that's meant to be conceptual? Well, define, I guess, I'm a conceptual artist, so define that yeah. for me. So um, <laughs> like, a, like a material that's just meant to be kind of a craft, like a craft hobby. And, okay. Um, I didn't see a lot of artists that were using it in any sort of conceptual manner where like you're meant to look but, but at the work and, and get got, some idea. I get that part, but what do you mm -hmm. consider a conceptual material? Because that that is like by definition, it's such a weird combination of words. Yeah. I, I really like that. I want to pick. I want to. I want to examine what you think about that because I'd never thought about it. But now that you put it in words, I know what 
what that makes me think. I want to hear what you do before what you what that makes you think before we 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 check our answers. Yeah. Well, I I guess for me it's um I mean, I you can use you could use like painting and then do a painting that's meant to have some sort of, you know, artist statement behind it or something that you're supposed to get okay. from the work. Um Okay, for me the the what I'm thinking is like materials that are not art materials but not necessarily craft materials like you know thing like reappropriating things like found objects and stuff mm -hmm. like that like that's what i was thinking but it's interesting i mean it could include so many different things that's why that's yeah. why i thought i was like what <laughs> yeah. this is interesting so at least i'm i feel like you know you go to the model train store you know that's where mm -hmm. i get a lot of the stuff i'm getting um but i'm definitely not using it to make the model train remotely at all yeah yeah you know it's serving a very different purpose in my hands um um, than like what these materials were created to do. Are you crafting the little elephants and animals or are those models? Um, so I actually have a combination um, in this particular exhibition. Um, so I, I haven't learned uh, 3D sculpture yet. Um, that's kind of on my to-do list for this year, but I did get um, a 3D resin printer. Mm -hmm. um, so on display is like everything from things that I have printed myself, like at home in my studio, all the way to um, still 3D printed, but just like ordering them, you know, online and then mm -hmm. having them shipped. And they're they're always like a awful, you know, scruffy. You can see all the layers and the plastic, and and you sand and, it down. Yeah, I have to be sanded and primed and painted and you know made to look like the the animal that it is, and not just a chunk of weird plastic. That's cool. I mean, because I was like, where do you source all this stuff? But that makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. How well versed are you with 3D printing? I mean, um, resin, resin printing is like, you're not going for like the, the, the plastic extruder. Yeah, <laughs> you're going yeah, to, no, that's like I, a real... I went straight to the, you know, I actually got a, um, an artist career advancement scholarship Oh wow. uh, that bought me the, the 3D printer. Well, I'm not going to ask you how much you know. it is because it's, none of us can afford it yeah. <laughs> without, well, without I mean, a grant. They're not, they're not as crazy as like I thought they would be, you know, Maybe like I do point. feel like they're, you know, they're like most of a paycheck now, but like, okay. not, you know, not too bad depends on the paycheck wait they're in the hundreds yeah holy shit yeah, i thought it yeah. was in the thousands no oh, I, i'm glad you told me because i, mean, I, would I probably just been... don't have like this fanciest like top of the line model but like it and um and one of like the wash and cure stations was like under a grand wow so i mean you know that's, what's wash and cure you know. Um, so the, the resin is, you know, kind of gross, toxic, bad smelling, you know, can make your skin react to it, uh, before it's been cured with ultraviolet light. Um, so the wash station just like cleans off as much of the gunk, um, that is kind of still resting on the model after it's been in the little vat of, um, the resin. So you kind of clean off as much as you can with that. You use like isopropyl alcohol which also stinks and is not my favorite. Um, and then you, you- It's a pungent studio, I'm, yeah, I'm picturing. Oh yeah, and I'm also like, I mean, like my first prints have been done, you know, this year. So I'm still, like, I think I'm gonna have to do some sort of like ventilation situation. Like we don't wanna kill any more of these brain cells yeah, 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 that yeah. are already dead if we can help it. Yeah. Um, and then the, the curing is just the same. It's the same little thing. You just take out like the alcohol bit and then it's got a little rotating table and, you know, it looks like there's sun tanning in there um, mm, to get so it's like, all it's cured up and, and nice and dry. Curing essentially is baking or what? Like yeah. what, what's, what's being done to cure it? Yeah, I... I Because it, I mean, it's not a... It's, it's not, not a, a heat serrano, thing. serrano, you know, it's not like... It's not like cured uh, yeah. <laughs> prosciutto. So, yeah. like, so I what mean, specifically is curing? It it must just be the like uh, heat. It hardens it. It doesn't. It doesn't like heat it up. I think it just. Um, it's just a light sensitive plastic material. Okay. So it's just like removing. I think the the. Um, it's making it like stable. Is okay. what the UV light I think is doing. It's it's no longer in its liquid form. It's now completely a solid. And then, you know, is no longer like sticky or tacky or anything like that and, and is now plastic, you know, goes from a liquid to, you know, a hard plastic. Now I want to look at them as you're talking about them. <laughs> yeah. Um, and the, the beavers just right behind you or um, like you can you can look up footage of, of the Idaho uh, fish and game, you know, picking uh -huh. up this beaver and like shoving it in that little box. And they had they had plans for the box because they designed it, you know, specifically. 
to parachute the beavers out of the plane. Wait, um, okay. So you, I think you, you are explain the general concept of the yes, show so that yeah. we can, we, we, we so, know where the beavers are coming from because yeah. you're talking about a model, but I don't think people understand that it's like something that happened. Yes. <laughs> um, so the show is titled, we know better. Okay. Um, and they are all kind of, uh, like nasty ecological encounters that involve kind of humans shooting ourselves in the foot over our relationship with animals. Can I commission you to do one about the time we blew up that whale and it? <laughs> oh my gosh! Yeah, in the chunks that like landed on people's cars. I just want the car with a whale chunk. Yeah, yeah. No, I would absolutely love to do one of those. I have, a, I have like a running list. You know, I'm yeah, like, I bet you do. You know, by the time do. I die, I gotta have like 50 of these stories. Um, That's why I said commission one instead of you should do this mm -hmm. because I figured you had like a million of them. Oh yeah. And I I'm probably lost. never going to commission it, but <laughs> <laughs> I still think it'd be fun. It'd be fun to like paint a little tiny whale chunk and then crush yeah. a little car and put it or on like there. have three different sardine things and then just have some corpse. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I'm, that's how I would do the art. That's not, it's, this is not a critique. The, I like, you know what? I, I hate it when people are like, you should do it that, the way I do stuff. You yeah. Know? Yeah. And it's like, well, then I would just be you yeah, if yeah, I was exactly. doing it the way you want me to. Um, but I'm picturing play sets because like it, mm -hmm. these, there is something so toyish about them, which I like oh, yeah. it because it like it. Um, the size is very intentional. Like yeah, they yeah. are kind of cute and small and consumable. Yeah. Um, but, you know, they're they're all it oddly, not great stories. It oddly reminds me of tilt, sh tilt shift photography, too, oh, mm -hmm. you know, because of. Uh, like it, it references a bunch of things just, mm -hmm. just because of the, um, the size, you know, mm -hmm. and like the fact that you can stand on top of it and like look down onto it. Yeah. Yeah. You're looking at a little scene. Um, for and people are, that are listening, what uh, about how, how, what, like what diameter are we talking about for each? So all of these are inside little glass cases mm -hmm. and, uh, you, um, so like snow globey kind of, it, yeah, it, it reminds yeah. me a little bit of like, like a uh, science kind of yeah. science fiction-y mm -hmm. kind of like you know um like what is it called the space agey mm -hmm. yeah yeah and i mean part of it was just like a little bit of practicality i had to prevent people from being able to touch yeah, them yeah. um but it was also like they're kind of a specimen mm -hmm. you know i i think of like glass bell jars as a way to to show it's a specimen mm -hmm. um and they're also it's the know, kind of container you could just put a heart in yeah, yeah, or some sort of like dried up lizard, or yeah, yeah. you know, just I don't know something that you want to preserve and remember. Um, I kind of remind. <laughs> I'm such a comic book nerd. It reminds me of uh, Brainiac, collector of words. Mm -hmm. Worlds. Do you, are you familiar with who Brainiac is? No, so he's I'm a not. he's a Superman villain that uh, basically. Ha um, like one of the only remaining cities of uh, Krypton where he is from is in a glass bottle because mm -hmm. before Krypton got destroyed, he collected it. So this guy is a collector of like, he's a brainiac, the collector. So he collects cities. And mm -hmm. so there's different stories where instead of having every star Wars toy, he just has like little tiny worlds yeah, on yeah, display. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and then, the, but they survive. So like mm -hmm. this, they're, they're like, continuing. are they like little tiny people and yeah. like aliens? They're, just, they're, oh. they're miniaturized. And Do then, they know like, yes, that they're okay. Yeah, it's pretty okay. traumatic. But then, I mean, now we're talking about comic books, but one of my favorite things is that it's like one of those avenues, like Krypton has so many gateways for people to survive and get to the, to, to, um, the earth, mm -hmm. right? Like the, the phantom zone, which is how, how, uh, General Zod gets through and all of these. But, uh, this is like, there's one storyline where Kandor is opened and like, there's like a whole community of supermen mm -hmm. that are like full size like it gets restored to full size and now the and like it just it's it, it becomes a shit show but anyway i do like that like collector of tragedies is yeah. What you are. yeah yeah they are like you know i think uh christine may have put it as you know they're like little tinned atrocities yeah you know i mean the the happiest of them is probably the parachuting beavers because you know 98 percent of them survived uh, okay, so tell me the story about the parachuting beavers. Um, so in the 1950s in Idaho, they were trying to figure out how to safely get beavers away from like places where humans were wanting to do agriculture because the beaver is flooding a place and you want it to be for grazing. You know, usually you would just shoot the beaver and not think twice about it. You know, you just get rid of the varmint. Um, so the uh, fish and game 
we're like, okay, well, it's the 1950s. Uh, we have a bunch of surplus uh, parachutes from World War II, right? So super cheap, you know, not, not like a really expensive um, way to relocate them. And um, they wanted to get them super remote, right? So like as far away from humans, like they're never going to overlap. Um, they're never going to be a problem again for like a farmer. Just give them a completely different area and then they won't get shot. Um, and one of the, the, you know, the very first like workshopping idea they had was to just put them in a box on the back of a donkey and, you know, like pack mule them. Um, but I, I guess what, they, what hundreds were, this is 1900s, 1800s. Yeah. Ugh, yeah. Yeah. 1950s. And, <laughs> um, and I guess like the, so they, they, I don't know, tried this for a little bit and just the donkey was like not cool with having this thing like rummaging around in a box strapped to their back. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it was like pretty clear like that they the donkeys were not going to be okay with the situation. They couldn't just trail it, like yeah. Well, I, I, I guess it's, it's just so remote. Yeah, that yeah. They're they're just like it. It wasn't feasible for like a human to just backpack them. No, no. I meant like know? just instead of like strapping it oh, and having it yeah. like a box. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I would I would guess it's like not it like. They've got to be like bushwhacking it or yeah, something, yeah, yeah. you know, like not not like established trails that you could take anything but, you know, yeah, yeah. like a donkey on it. So they um, they were like, OK, we have these surplus. But you know what parachutes. I mean? Like usually donkeys pull carts. Yeah. Yeah. You could just do a cart of like four beavers, but maybe time also. Maybe it would take them like days to yeah, backpack yeah. them in or to like take, you know, with the donkeys. So their their solution was to do you know, parachute the beavers in. Okay. Um, so they tried this out on one particular beaver. They named him Geronimo because of course they did. Mm -hmm. Um, and they, why do we yell Geronimo? Do we know that? I have, I have do you no know idea. that? I don't, I should you, know that. If you guys yeah. know, please comment down below. Yeah. Cause I, Let us that's, know. that's like a chief, right? Chief Geronimo. So like, why are you yelling it when you, I, I'm so ignorant. Yeah. I, please. Who jumped out of a plane and like <laughs> initiated this Geronimo thing? Um, and so, so they uh, designed this particular box that just like under the tension of the parachute, it would stay closed. And then when the tension of the parachute was relaxed, when the parachute was just on the ground, um, then the ropes would kind of allow this box to open and then Beaver could pop out. And now he was in a really remote location um, and could start, you know, a little Beaver colony. Um, so they put Geronimo through this, I think, seven times. Mm. And it got to the point where he was, you know, completely, you know, he'd, he'd go he'd, to pop out the box, right? And then he'd see the dudes and he'd be like, oh, great, I'm getting shoved back in the box. So, like, he wouldn't even leave. He would, uh, just, he would just, like, wait, you know, to be I was shoved hoping back he was on like the box again. A hot shot, like, flirting with other beavers, no. you know, like no, a mean, fly boy. They, they did say that they released him with some nice lady beavers. Okay. So, you know, when he was done with his seventh flight, he he was actually relocated. They didn't go grab him again. Okay. Um. So hopefully there's you know a long line of beaver descendants that came from came from Geronimo. Um. And then so they did I think like seventy or so beavers. They relocated this way. In one box or in um, individual they each box? had their own boxes. Yeah. So I don't I don't know if it was like a year that long like, that they were just catching them and, and they just didn't know what to do with parachute know. with all those parachutes. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, it, like what? this is insane. And I guess one of, one of them did have a malfunction, so they just basically like chucked that beaver out of the plane, and he just like fell to his death. Um, poor beaver. You know, yeah, poor beaver. I'm not exactly sure. I don't know. It it seems like. So then you said 98%. So how many of that, of 70 yeah. is that? I don't know. I'm not going to well, Just math. only one. Oh, it's only yeah, one. Yeah, only okay. one. It's probably not actually 98%. Okay. But yeah, only one beaver was a casualty of this program. All right. And then let's quickly talk about some more atrocities because this sounds, this is fun. Unless, did you have a topic, by the way? Oh, no. no I okay, mean, not, cool. Yeah, right, not right. in that, particular. That's fine. <laughs> um, I just didn't want, like, I didn't want you to have prepared one and then oh, not yeah, ask you about yeah. it. Okay. So then uh, what, what's over there by you? So um, this is Tyke the elephant, um, and and all of these are like real stories. Like you can mm -hmm. you can look up each one. There's oftentimes like video of it or photography, and and um, I, I use that really heavily in you know how it looks. Mm -hmm. I try to make it accurate towards you know what it looked like. Um, so this is Tyke the elephant uh, in the 80s. She was performing in Honolulu. Um, and she started to attack her groomer 
which is, um, of course, it's very, very small, so you can't see it. Um, but by her back, Groomer by by like a trainer, right? Yeah, not yeah. not a like, not a charged like, word. Like the trainer is lackey, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, but I guess he was just he was called a groomer, so maybe he was oh, more I, in I, charge I, of like the you know. I the got stalls nervous and stuff. because of YouTube, and then I realized oh. that there are pet groomers. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. So that sort of groomer. Okay. Yeah. Yes, we're not talking about any anything else. No, no. Um, so she uh, started to attack, you know, this one guy. And he, I think, got, like, knocked unconscious, but he was still alive. Um, so he's kind of resting, like, at her back feet. And then, like, under um, one of her front feet, she has, and he's, like, in his, you know, circus garb. So it's, like, you know, blue with, like, silver embroidery um, was her actual trainer that, like, went out there to try to get her under control. Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, this is like a performance. The kids are supposed to be having fun, right? Oh, this is in front of people. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> it's this in front is, of yeah. children. Okay. So this is in front of people. Um, and she ends up uh, killing that her trainer. Oh, wow. Um, and but the groomer survives? Yeah, the groomer survived the ordeal. Well, the good trainer on the trainer. Died. Yeah. yeah. I mean, um, but like the, the trainer life. actually, uh, he was like cited for multiple animal abuse complaints at like uh. previous jobs. So it seems like he probably kind of deserved what he got and maybe should have gotten it a long time ago mm -hmm. um and and so, how very christian of you yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah um so she so she ends up kind of freeing herself right okay. so so the this kipper snack can is like the moment of her freedom okay you know she she is uh kind of you know she's killed the trainer she now exits the arena she's on the streets in honolulu um yeah and the cops like don't know what to do, you know, with this like large animal uh, just running down the street. So they end up um, shooting her, I think, 86 times. And they have just like the most horrific footage of her just slowly like 87 over times. They yeah. didn't have anything that could kill no, her faster. No, right? I, I mean, it, it's, it's like they're it's shooting just her like, with 22s. Yeah. Yeah. With their little handguns. Yeah, you know? yeah. And so she just like slumps over and then just slowly like bleeds to death. Um, on the streets of Honolulu. Um, it's so crazy that I know that there's such a thing as an elephant gun yeah. because of cartoons, mm -hmm. because of Looney Tunes. Yeah, they did not have elephant guns. No, they were so, not handy. Yeah, she did not have a clean or fast death at all. Did you, uh, did, not to, uh, I mean, I know this is this story has been very well covered, but we're talking about elephants getting revenge. Did you hear about the woman that like got trampled and then in her funeral, the elephant, came back and trampled I, no I, I forget I the details this was like a big story that's why I, I'm actually surprised mm -hmm. I, I felt like it was too um too uh what's it called uh, viral of a story to share but mm -hmm. yeah it's pretty crazy I think I forget if it like they it was like I think it was the wake because mm -hmm. <laughs> it would like the elephant didn't dig it up, but the wake came back. It came back, and just, yeah. Bah, 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 like he's like, oh, I got beef. So mm -hmm. I mean, I'm just to back up what you were saying that <laughs> that it was probably warranted because yeah. I think elephants do understand yeah. abuse. Well, and it's also like I don't know. I mean, I I do feel like we should like respect all creatures. Mm -hmm. You know, like. Good luck with that. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm with I, you, but you know, but especially something like an elephant, it's yeah. just like we have way too much proof that like being in human captivity, yeah, does not seem like the ideal situation. Um, well, I mean, we got them. we got we made progress with blackfish, so maybe maybe yeah. there's. Don't they still have him though? Like, isn't he still at SeaWorld? He just nobody gets in the water with him. Tilikum. Yeah. I don't remember. I, I it's I, I probably tried to block out most of that because yeah. it was pretty brutal. But um, but yeah, I mean, I definitely thought of it while you were talking about the animal because it's that like it's one of the most notable trainers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> things. Um, yeah. I don't know. Um, it's interesting. Elephants. Yeah. I mean, I'm totally with you. And like, I I watched a um documentary at the California Science Center which has the IMAX 3D thing mm -hmm. and they're like there's like a the sanctuary where they like get depressed because they're 
like of orphaned elephants and like they're like literally like they need to be nurtured mm -hmm. with like love and affection i think orangutans too mm -hmm. so anyway it was it, i forget what the movie is called but like if you look up california science center i doubt they've taken it out of circulation because they still have like the hubble stuff i'm sure mm -hmm. <laughs> but 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 yeah it, it it really is interesting like the um I don't know, like boomers had such a different, I, my grandmother, <laughs> who is from the silent generation, even though she's Cuban, so she's not technically, mm -hmm. um, I once asked her and she told me that she thought God fucked up by uh, including animals. <laughs> 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 so maybe maybe minds are changing you know because i think that yeah. like that's a very old antiquated way of thinking of things all right and then we've got what are these guys um so those are the savo man-eating lions okay um so they were i believe the 1930s on like a railroad uh project in um uganda i believe uh correct me if i'm wrong yeah comments um, that's what yeah, comments, comments are for yeah and be nice yeah um <laughs> And they, uh, they had some sort of, uh, like malformity where they, they didn't grow manes. Like they didn't assimilate into a pride like male lions usually do. Um, so they were How just many two, of them are there? Oh, two? Just these two. Yeah. Just these two. Um, and I think they were siblings. Um, so two brothers. Is that a common thing that like that, 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 or I, do you, I don't comment down below. Yeah. I, I can already tell you don't know. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if it's like a super common thing. I don't know if, um, if any other lions have like run amok as much as they did. Okay. Um, and they, and they did, you know, kill quite a few and consume at least partially, um, quite a few people working on that, uh, railroad. And then the, you know, oh. the British dude in charge, you know, went on a rampage to, to go kill them because they were scaring everybody and people were running A British off and... dude in, in the uh, in the thirties is so polite but so dangerous. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> Cheerio. Pop, 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 pop. Yeah, definitely. And like I think there's the I don't know, there's like a whole movie that's that's about uh, this particular story. What's the do you know what it's called? <sighs> is it it's not that the the one of uh, the one with Michael Douglas, is it? Hmm. No, no, no. The... I've even seen it. I I feel like it was like a one word title. Okay, it's fine. Um, it it's not new, but yeah, there. Yet another opportunity for you guys yes, to comment. More more opportunities to comment. Um, and so when he was finally successful and he killed the two lions, um, he had them just as like the floor rugs, you mm -hmm. know, um, for a while, and then at some point they were sold to this Chicago Natural History Museum, and then they taxidermied them, so you can actually go visit these two. You can taxidermy yeah. something that you've turned into a rug. I guess so. Jesus. I was kind of surprised. I'm sure they had to have like a master taxidermist, you know, mm -hmm. like, cause they're going to have bullet holes and I mean, their fur is going to be like worn away cause they were rugs. I don't know. So anyways, you can still go visit them in Chicago. And so the pigeons over here are yes. not, uh, they're not the hat pigeons from recently. No, no. <laughs> I mean, I kind of am curious if it's like the same person or like the same group that's like copycatting this. Like, is there just somebody in Vegas that's like, Anytime we have an opportunity to glue something to the head of a pigeon, we will. So what do they what do they have glued onto their heads? Yeah, so they are uh, MAGA hats and Trump toupees. Okay. And it was in 2020, like right before the pandemic hit, um, there was a Democratic um, debate in Vegas. Mm -hmm. So uh, the group that like claimed, you know, to have released all of these pigeons in protest of the debate um, was called Putin. And it was, you know, Pigeons United to Interfere Now uh, was the name of the group. And what, 2020? Yeah. Oh, so it's not about Ukraine, it's about the election. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it was election stuff. Um, Wait, so these were Democrats? Well, so so it would be there would be a lot of Democrats, you know, visiting Vegas, like for no, no, this no, but, thing. But Putin, so who was protesting what? So I, I would guess it's satire. So I would think it would probably be an anti-Trump person that was putting... Wait, I missed the fucking mark. Yeah, yeah. But I also, I'm like, I don't know. In my mind, I'm like, it's still kind of animal cruelty. Like, no, matter, it's awful. No matter, like, what like, way you swing it. Because you're still, like, preventing an animal from flying, which is a major mode of... shit to their head know. kills them. Yeah, yeah. And, like, and there, you know, there's, like the the pigeon rescue is like well now we 
in addition to our other problems, have to like unglue MAGA hats from pigeons yeah, right yeah. now for the next couple of weeks. I heard the story. I, I don't know if I knew it was MAGA hats or if the, someone like or if someone else has done it because someone told. The way I heard the story was someone thought it was cute and then realized like a week later on their podcast, like they got eat letters and were like, oh no, this is terrible. <laughs> yeah, this is not great. <laughs> but I don't think they would have thought it was cute if it was Megan. No. But well, man, I'm so disappointed in that anti-Trumper. Yeah. I mean, who has ever heard of a cr- person that was anti-Trump that was crazy? I mean, right? Yeah. It, I'm, I mean, it. yeah, it definitely happens. I, I feel like it's just a weird... I don't know. It's a weird story, but we did just have cowboy hats, you know, pigeons with cowboy hats. That's the one I think I heard. Like this past week or so. Oh no, then this was a while ago. Oh, Oh, so that's actually, it's really troubling how common that is because we're, we talking about two separate instances mm -hmm. aside from the one you made a piece. Yeah, one a few weeks ago and and probably one in between. This one and that one, yeah. Yeah. All right. And then, uh. Should we like what 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 attracts you to the stories? So it hey. seems like so uh, the, uh, the themes that I'm seeing are uh, abusive nature. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's it's what was the title of the show again? Uh, we know better. We know better. Yeah. Okay. So it's usually uh, like just abuse of nature, right? Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah. Every once in a while, it's like a a situation where you know nature, you know, could fight back. Mm. So um, one of the dioramas is like two-headed sharks. And in the diorama, even though in reality, we're just, you know, getting baby two-headed sharks showing up in fishing nets more frequently. You know, they aren't making it to adulthood. But I chose to do a diorama that's kind of Mm Jaws-like. So there's two little people in a tiny little, you know, dinghy in the ocean being circled by a large two-headed shark in kind of a menacing way. Mm -hmm. Um, But of course, like the real story behind it is, you know, just like everything is having a great amount of pressure that we're putting on them constantly for years. Um, And oftentimes I feel like we either realize what we're doing is kind of catastrophic or we just keep doing it because it's easier to keep doing what we're doing instead of make changes. Um, And then we end up in situations where it's like we've completely screwed ourselves over. We've screwed over, you know, an entire species or like group of animals. And now like the amount of effort we have to go through to like undo um, this, you know, situation is billions and billions of dollars. Yeah. It's interesting that we sounds like a lot more people than actually is the case. I mean, I guess in the 1930s, it was more of a direct thing. Like, yeah. But like now it just feels because I grew up during the recycling like revolution. Mm-hmm. Right. Like I remember I was around when the you, you might not even know about ozone layers. Oh, I. Yeah. You, you have yeah, you ever, we did. Heard? We did cover the ozone layers. OK. Yeah. So the thinning, weren't they thinning? Th- yeah. yeah, and then we just changed the 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 the. I think we took the CFCs out of the um, the which call it the mm-hmm. spray cans. Yes, yeah. And then and then that changed that, but I mean, the whole personal responsibility and recycling, and then like you get you you do it for most of your life, and then you get to a point and you realize like, oh, like only one of these things that I'm putting into this bin is recyclable yeah, and barely. And it's mm-hmm. like, like, I think if you go past two on the little emblems, like you, yeah, nothing, n- nothing. nothing gets yeah. recycled, but mm-hmm. then we're still putting them there. So we're separating the plastics so that they can fill a landfill, a very specific yeah. landfill, mm-hmm. but we've been believing it all this time. It's yeah. really crazy. So, so where do you, like, I mean, you're doing, you're making work about this. Mm-hmm. How do you feel about that? Like, is it, like, it was just the way for, like, what do you think the solution is? I mean. I, so I, I also struggle with, like, I mean, it's, it's way bigger, you know, than, than what I can actually control in my own direct yeah, actions. Yeah. Um, so sometimes it feels kind of uh, pessimistic, like, you know. Mm-hmm. No matter how much you recycle, like you're, you are not really what's causing the problem. Yeah. Um, so, you know, like, like one, one question I get fr- pretty frequently is like, you know, I did choose uh, potted fish tins to put everything in, um, but I am not, you know, vegetarian. So like, I am, I am still, you know, I am still part of the problem. I'm still mm-hmm. putting pressure, you know, on, you know, a variety of like animal species through consuming them. Um, but I feel like the the only way I 
you know, like the only changes I've made or try to do in my own life is like, just like be gentle, like mm -hmm. be as gentle as you can in whatever way possible. I mean, it's not reasonable to, um, you know, like spend hours and hours and hours and all of this, you know, Mormon guilt, uh, to, you know, like not consume anything or, you know, like raise yeah, yeah. my own livestock and like only eat vegetables from my own garden or, you know, like we still have to live in the world. I mean, it. The amount of packaging that <laughs> oh, yeah. I get just from shopping at Trader Joe's. Yeah. It is insane. Mm -hmm. It is insane. And, and I know like, and I look at those numbers and they're not good. Yeah. <laughs> like I mean, the, the little uh, numbers of, uh, of what makes and it. I mean, like I'll still, you know, I'll still like sign petitions and yeah. occasionally like write the letters and, you know, like. I don't know, do some sort of like feeble effort to try to get some things to be in a better situation. But I do feel like it's just, it's just. Are you aware mm -hmm. of like what, of, of like the uh, Bill Gates buying all the farmland and all of that? No, and, I'm not. Okay. So one of the things that the people who are high key and uh, uh, responsible for all these p things, like the corporations and whatnot, so they're like, the, I saw Bill Nye say this and it was really disappointing, which is that like, he's like pro Monsanto now mm -hmm. uh, and he's pro big food because he believes that that's the only way to feed people, right? Mm -hmm. So that's Bill Nye. And then in Europe, there's this thing that's happening that's really concerning, which are a lot of protests are popping up where farmers are protesting the CO2, like the the carbon emission standards that they're being imposed on them because ultimately what they are claiming, what the protesters are claiming is that they are setting it to a standard that's so high that it just prices people out. Mm -hmm. and, and then it's like, it's kind of what happened during the pandemic with BlackRock buying up all the houses. Mm -hmm. it, and like now BlackRock is, is basically one of the, makes it really impossible to buy land because you go to buy something and then they up, 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 pay by like a, a lot because they have the resources and it benefits them to have that much land. Mm -hmm. So something similar is happening like that in Europe with, uh, with like it. And that's why, like after the recycling that I kind of buy what they're saying, mm -hmm. you know, what their, what their angle is on it, which is basically they want to centralize food production and, and have entire control. And then you start hearing people about a like people saying that like the solution is for us to eat bugs. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, we don't, ha there's like a middle ground. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, like I, like when I'm feeling really optimistic and yeah. like, I'm like, okay, like we, we just, we're bound to figure some things out, you know, like we're sort of due for an industrial revolution, you know, or something yeah. like some sort of breakthrough in technology that then, you know, fixes kind of our, you know, uh, carbon dioxide emission problems. And it's not like, it's not actually like each of us buying a Tesla, like, mm -hmm. uh, even though it kind of feels like that's what, what well, we, it feels like it's, it feels like the people that cause the problem are going to make us pay for it is what I'm saying. Oh, you know, yeah. like, like for example, mm -hmm. like the idea that we'll never be, uh, you know, maybe our children will never be able to buy steak, mm -hmm. you know, because meat is bad, but steak's still going to be around. It's just not for the masses. Yeah, yeah you know? it's just and so, not going to be affordable Yeah, at all. and so it, it seems like a really, like, I mean, I apologize for my cynicism, but it seems like a really dark loop, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> where it's like, but like, but, but yeah, in the sense of personal responsibility, it's so overwhelming, you know? So I, I, I really think that this is an interesting conversation. And I like one of the things that I appreciate about the pieces is that, you're talking about the thing, but there's some kind of fun to it, mm -hmm. you know, like the, an the elephant got its revenge. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I definitely was, you know, I was specific about, you know, which, which way to, to show yeah, kind yeah. of each event, you know, to, to be a little bit playful at sometimes. And, you know, like some of them are not, I mean, the beavers is, is kind of an example of, of how sort of strange humans can be, you mm -hmm. know, being like, oh, we have surplus what's it and then this is our solution to like these you know couple of beavers i can't get over the fact that it's one per beaver <laughs> yeah yeah i said oh, yeah. beaver i meant beaver yeah one <laughs> one beaver per box yeah um That's... so i know it's definitely like at least at least with making art for me it's usually like something bugs me 
Like I, I, I can't really, um, I don't have like a solution for it, but it, it sticks in my mind. Yeah. Um, I'd so it's like encountering some sort of uh, news story and I'm like that, like, I just can't even. It's ambivalence you know. is what, is what you're like. And, and I think that that's actually a, you know, a pretty powerful, uh, um, thing to express because it, it uh, like, I mean, certainty is so <laughs> it's, it, it like, it's, it's all, it's so modernist mm -hmm. to, to be certain about things, you know, whereas you like ambivalence is a space of like, well, we're accounting for many things. We're not dogmatic about this. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, like I don't feel being like I'm being preached. I feel like I'm being empathized with. It's mm -hmm. like you're suffering. I get this is something we share. And, and almost for me, the thing that's most important is the acknowledgement and the connection with the fact that someone sees what I think about. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. As opposed to like, you're a bad person, you're yeah. a shitty consumer, which mm -hmm. I feel like it, it, you know, like it's a, it's a delicate thing. And I think that you've done that admirably, you know, in terms of uh, like, you're not, if you're so certain and you're preaching to the choir, you know, yeah, like it's, it, it, it's not it, doing anything. It's not doing anything. Making someone feel something that agrees with you is different than telling them what they already believe, mm -hmm. you know? So it, I think, I think that that is, uh, it, do you define as a conceptual artist or do you define as a painter? What, what, what? I feel like conceptual artist like sits well with me. I do mm. feel like I, um, you know, I do feel like, like a uh, craftsmanship is important as well. Like I, I do, you know, spend a lot of time trying to if i'm making something you know like a diorama i try to make it well and learn as much as i can mm. um, about that sort of thing so that they you know there's not i don't know something like falling apart where that's all you notice when you look at it yeah, is, yeah. is how poorly it's made mm -hmm. um which sometimes i think conceptual artwork is just slapping like some astro turf on a pink wall and then you yeah, know, yeah, calling yeah. that art, which like I I think it's fine that that exists, but that's that's not something that resonates with me. But I I also find that um, the artwork that does you know kind of try to make you sad, right? You know, for the sake of of being sad about something, for me is like a turnoff. Yeah, I'm just like okay, well I just felt shitty, and then I'm not doing anything. Like it didn't make me like consider it or think about like any nuance going on or you know maybe like multiple layers to what they're saying and that's that's definitely one of my goals is yeah you know like it's it's not you know like like one one thing that's come up is like there's no gore you know mm. like I, like there isn't i mean the elephant is crushing somebody but from across the room like people are just like oh a cute elephant you know in the circus and then they get closer and then they learn more Mm -hmm. like uh then the story kind of unfolds um, yeah. in a way that i think is is kind of satisfying and like i try to do it intentional like i want them to be infographic and um, you know not not just like make you feel crappy mm -hmm. and that's it no yeah and i mean i think that it's the the perspective on it makes the humans just animals as well mm -hmm. right like so it's like um it's not uh, like you are taking the God's eye view of these creatures <laughs> that are <laughs> smaller than you. And I think it re, re, re uh, contextualizes it. But yeah, no, I mean, as uh, like what I'm starting to get into and we can start wrapping up because I like, you know, I, I, once we start talking about conceptual art, I think oh, people, yeah. <laughs> people are going to hate us. But um, what I'm getting into a little bit is uh, uh, con conceptual abstraction, mm -hmm. which is fun where you're taking elements and you're, like putting them together but maybe the thing like for example i used to make work that was really easy to explain mm -hmm. like i would be like this is this does this and blah 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 and people would be like oh i get it and then they didn't need to see the work right mm -hmm. so that kind of got me into the, into this space of like okay let's do conceptual work that i can't explain mm -hmm. <laughs> but people can intuit and that i've been having a lot of fun with that but i think that it's interesting to talk to somebody that does sculptural stuff but if like i can, i can see i can, i could i would have been just as um i would have been equally unsurprised if you said you were a sculptor or you said you were all the, anything else mm -hmm. 
but the fact that you are conceptually, I, I think that I see that. And now I'm curious to see what the rest of your work is because I find like conceptual artists can tend to have like an aesthetic to it, mm -hmm. to them, but the materials that they work might be varied. Are you exclusively doing uh, miniatures for, for yeah. a while now or no? I mean, I'm, I'm definitely not finished with a series. Mm. Like there, there are, you know, I am actively collecting uh, nice uh, tinned fishes to be future dioramas. But I feel like for me, it's like drawing is my home base Same. is like just, like what I revert back to kind of in between. Cause you need a projects. practice between yeah. you need to have something you can do as a practice while you wait for your brilliant new project. Yeah. Yeah. So, so like I, I always fall back to drawing um, yeah. and oftentimes like weirdly enough, I'm like illustrating, you know, fun, lighthearted coloring books for adults. Mm -hmm. Um, like I've done one that's uh religious iconography, but they're all sloths like the Virgin Mary as a sloth. Um, and I'm actually those, offended. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I mean, I I know you call like, the Virgin you know, Mary, not she, even a slut. You're calling she, her lazy. <laughs> yeah, she makes a pretty good slop. I mean, like the Seven Deadly Sins, like they look va, va, good va, on her. Yeah. yeah. Um. So I always default back to drawing, kind of in in some manner, in some way. Mm. It's it's not like it's usually not like a thing that you're supposed to see in a gallery. It's just kind of sketchbook. Uh, Is practice, there a sloth, but, uh, Joseph Smith? Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, and an angel Moroni in the background, also a sloth. What does Moroni look like? Um, he's just a white dude. He's not a dreidel, but, like in. The... He's got like kind of mid-length hair. But, how, how do you, you know. feel about the uh, South Park episode? Oh, I um, I actually had my grandfather, who was very sincerely Mormon, um, tell me about the South Park episode and just be like, "Oh, it had like this cute little song." It was like, dum, 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 you know, <laughs> <laughs> like, like totally, he was just excited. It was on TV and, and he didn't realize oh, what they were saying. He didn't realize that at all. And it was, it was like, smart, I don't know. smart, smart, smart. Yeah. Yeah. It <laughs> was the wife. That's it like was pretty funny. The, oh man. I mean, like it's, it's actually funny. I, like not that Scientology and Mormonism are at all related. I mean, they're more on the cult side. I, they, think, I mean, as far they, as they, I will say go. they were, they're new. I'm just trying to be respectful to anybody, including Scientology because they're victims too or yeah. you know mm -hmm. um but like yeah man south park has just destroyed like scientology also doesn't have any any new recruitment mm -hmm. they're just like they're just a real estate company now yeah <laughs> yeah it's hard to do when you can like go look something up and find out very quickly yeah like, that was the similarity yeah. that i that i was noting but i think also like you know you can also just google the catholic church and find out horrible things too so. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so we're not just because some are newer and some are older i definitely think that like like for example uh santa claus like St. Nick was a cult, like mm -hmm. the cult of St. Nick and it was idolatry and it's just been, mm. you know, made part of it. So like it, it's just been there long enough, mm -hmm. you know? And, uh, and yeah. And I, and the thing that I like, the, the thing I said about the Messiah comes from a podcast that I always reference because it's literally the only thing I have time to listen to anymore. Mm -hmm. Last podcast on the left. Not sure if you're familiar, but they made the case that the same thing happened in Scientology and I'm, I, I, they didn't say specifically Mormonism, but like it always takes someone to. I wonder who the Christian, like who the 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 Christian Joseph. Uh, no, um, what's the other guy? The oh, not, like Brigham Young. Brigham Young. Mm -hmm. Who's the one that like? Because that guy is lost to history. Yeah. We got Jesus, but we don't got that guy. That like you know. Um, I, I mean, maybe, maybe he, if I did the research, but like, it's really interesting how these things continue. I'm, I'm like, as somebody who has been brainwashed by both religion and cults, <laughs> I was in, I did a landmark for a little while. Mm -hmm. So I'm always just fascinated with like groupthink in general, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. So I hope you didn't, I hope I wasn't offensive when I was asking oh, no, about Mormonism. Totally fine, yeah. It really is interesting because it's about humanity, you mm -hmm. know, it's about like how people, Oh, like, we need to belong and, and And we need to believe. Yeah, and and it's and I don't know, it just it manifests in really weird different ways and you know, I I come from one that's definitely not the most common. So. Yeah. No, and polygamy is such a specific like yeah. it's it is it, it's something that is unique to yeah, that, yeah. you know. Yeah, not everybody did that. Yeah, and like 
it's almost borderline a sex cult in its origins. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, I always think it's weird how, um, how like anti-sex it is as a religion, like you're not supposed to do anything, but it's like, I don't know. It feels like that was a huge part of like the early years of the church was, Oh, I want to marry so-and-so. So so, like, I'm just going to get a revelation to do it and then I'm going to go do it. And unfortunately, it's hard not to conflate the latter day the, or the um, the FDL or the yeah the FLDS for, yeah mm-hmm. FLDS <laughs> my dyslexia yeah even though I feel like they're more true to the faith than really I mean technically yeah like whoa that's I don't a know. that's a that's a very very shocking yeah. statement yeah I mean it's I don't know I feel like I come from the the watered down version but there there's always a a sort of question is like if they were to reinstate and and make polygamy like mandatory like part of getting into the best part of heaven you know like i'm i'm kind of curious how many people would leave or like how many people would 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 be right on that yeah. <laughs> you know but one of the also also the things that's interesting about the scientology is that they are very much against uh, like like if you reinterpret like there's there's there are no offshoots that are that are considered legit they just mm-hmm. get bashed and hammered by by scientology which is one of the things that like i think maybe mormonism didn't quite do yeah at least not very successful yeah they didn't shut out everything else and Mm -hmm. obviously we know how many versions of like christians there are so yeah (laughs) it's just part of it but like that's really interesting i think that i i don't know it's going to be interesting because i think miscavige is probably going to pass away soon or like not soon he's just going to have to pass the mantle yeah or like he just can't keep it up because he's in hiding right now but who's going to be next yeah you know so anyway this miscavige it, they they posit the, sh- the podcast posits the miscavige is there bring him young because um, mm-hmm. and then and then the thing that i was saying is that they they say that like christ passing away uh, L. Ron Hubbard wasn't supposed to pass mm-hmm. away. Is there anything like that? Like, was, was uh, Joseph Smith was mortal that was going to die, or was he? Well, it was definitely a um, like a splintering. You know, happened when uh, Joseph Smith died, and like Emma, his wife, um, thought that it should be uh, like a. I don't know if a monarchy is the right word, but that it should be his son. Yeah, so much of inherited. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. That it shouldn't it shouldn't go to you know Brigham Young and kind of his ideas that didn't. I mean, it sounds like he would clash heads mm-hmm. with uh, Joseph Smith over some things. Um, so that there was like a splintering, you know, that it should be Joseph Smith and then his son and then yeah. his son and then that that should be the way that the the religion uh, passes down and and that just. I mean, for whatever reason, like Brigham Young was the popular route and yeah, now I, most Mormons are, you know, I, I don't know exactly what the name of, um, but he wasn't like a, splintering, but. As a Smith wasn't considered a Messiah though, right? No, I mean, he's, he's a prophet. Yeah. Yeah. They, they use the term prophet. Um, and let me tell you, Emma was a hundred percent wrong. Because <laughs> <laughs> if uh, if uh, it's the same thing happened in 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 uh, Scientology, like and um, yeah, man, like you you need a Brigham Young to make that shit happen. Mm-hmm. I'm like I'm in fact now I'm gonna dig into like the er- origins of Catholicism because it's been so long. I studied it. Obviously. Yeah, I don't know if there's a particular pope or something that would, that like yeah, yeah that would be that the would Brigham be like Young. That. Yeah. Maybe it's just maybe they're lost to history. Yeah. I feel like Catholicism. I I I don't know. I enjoy the art because it dominated it for so long and made such pretty buildings. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I don't know. Maybe there's a pope that would be equivalent to. And so much of it is is like low key pagan too. Mm-hmm. You know, like that. Like the fact that there's saints is really weird. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> anyway well th- I, i've had a lovely time talking like this is literally my favorite to- topic <laughs> <laughs> faith and religion as someone who's agnostic and has very little <laughs> mm-hmm. i'm always like hey man what it, what is it because there's so much of it that overlaps too so mm-hmm. it's like it it is a human yeah human thing you know 
It's part of being an animal. Anyway, what can we promote? Thank you so much for being on the show. What can we promote for you? You are on Instagram? Yeah, I'm just on Instagram. It's and it's just, one L, Allison. Yep. My parents were being straightforward and they didn't realize that everybody would try to give me an extra L. Okay. Um, so it's just Allison. Uh, <laughs> an extra L? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hopefully not that one. I mean, at least not all the time. But yeah, uh, I'm just uh, Allison D. Neville is my Instagram handle and can look up my website too. Okay. And, and, and so Allison D. Neville? Yeah, D is in dog. Uh, it, on, uh, on the website as well? Not just on the Instagram? Yeah. There's okay, a okay. British uh, watercolorist who has my same name spelled with the one L. And uh, so I, I had to add my middle initial in there mm. for people to find With me. the one L? Yeah, yeah. She actually reached out to me uh, via email and said she's like, I had this compulsion to buy a sardine can. But she's like, I don't use anything like that in my artwork and then i found you by googling myself <laughs> and then she's like i feel like you need to have this um so yeah i don't know so we've 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 exchanged an email or two yeah uh, very very different artwork but yeah serendipity yeah. like yeah. it's hard not to read into those things yeah. even if you're not a, a person of faith right mm -hmm. you're like it's meant to be that is part of being human i yeah, love that yeah, i love that for sure and then unfortunately that is very manipulable or malleable yeah, and yeah you it doesn't can go tell. very well <laughs> so pretty soon you'll be in her church <laughs> is my yeah. anticipation no i'm kidding possibly the church of watercolor yes watercolor architecture <laughs> that might be too far for me i don't know yeah i don't see you getting no. i mean i think once you're out you're out yeah yeah especially one like mormonism i think catholicism is a little bit more mainstream so I mean, like, i still eat the food you know I what food do you I guys still have, what? like the funeral potatoes and and the jello salads and you guys have yeah. that what's what do you guys call when you mix uh oh fry sauce yeah yeah that's uh ketchup and mayo right yep okay. oh but if you're getting really fancy oh, you sorry. can put like a tiny bit of like hickory barbecue sauce or like the juice from like a, a dill pickle uh jar so you know there's there's some variation there, but it I don't know I feel like I I miss it when I when I leave Utah and I'm like oh now it's just ketchup, it's not like the lovely melding of ketchup and mayo. Yeah, I I I do the ketchup and mayo because I grew up in Europe, mm -hmm. but I don't do like what you guys do, which is like mix it all together into one sauce. Yeah, like that way I can regulate how much of each I want. Like mm -hmm. sometimes I want all mayo. <laughs> Anyway, yeah. I'll leave you guys on that gross thought. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the fry sauce. The fry sauce. No, the me just eating potato <laughs> fries with, <laughs> with mayo. mayonnaise. Yeah, <laughs> it's really good. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> um, all right, and then we will be back next week with another guest uh, with another topic that may or may not be art related. Thank you guys for watching. Bye.